hands, all you people, and then it says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. I feel a triumph in the building this morning. I feel victory in my spirit this morning. So I want to start this morning with us clapping our hands like you have the victory. I mean, clapping with confidence that the victorious God is here in our midst. And then I want you to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Great things are in store for us this morning, and I'm excited. I'm going to invite you to come to the altar for fresh cleansing. This is a time in the service where we lay our, our thoughts down, we, we focus in on God. So many things happen over the course of the week. And if you were good and you spent time in his presence, I'm sure that on your way here this morning, something would have happened to take your focus off of God. And this is the moment in the service where we want to connect in with our Savior, when we want to purpose and say, God, search me. And if there's anything that would hinder my worship from going up as a sweet smelling savor before you. I want to lay it down. This is the time when we want to focus our hearts, our mind, our soul. This is when we want to grab active every captive, every thought and make it captive to what God is saying and what God is doing and what he wants to accomplish in us today. So I'm going to invite you to just spend some time as we go into fresh cleansing. to the Lord one more time. Tell the Lord. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. And Lord, you are Lord, you are more beautiful 
hurricane in Florida, you're worthy, God. Even with the damage that it caused, you're worthy. Above all else, you're worthy. God, we just thank you and we glorify your name. We magnify you and we lift you up, God. We come to you this morning, Father. We just ask for forgiveness, Father God. Forgiveness for things that we've done knowingly and unknowingly, God. Things that we don't even think about, how we walk past a homeless person and not feed, help feed them, God. Or, 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 or see somebody struggling and not help them out, God. Because we're so wrapped up in our own selves and our own situations, God. Help us step outside of ourselves, God, to help somebody else. Father God, cleanse us for our un, un, unkind ways at times. The way we may have argued with somebody in traffic. Father God, help us. Forgive us for something that we may have seen on the, heard on the radio or seen on TV, God. Even if it's not something that's sin per se. But just because it might not be something that you wanted us to hear or see, God. Your word says, in all thy ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct your paths. So we apologize, God. Forgive us for our sins. Cleanse us in the blood of Jesus. The blood that it cleans better than tithe. A love that is better than the love between a mother and a child. Father God, we thank you for the power that is in your love, God. Forgive us, God, for not standing beside our, 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 our friends when they go through. Forgive us for not having a, 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 a caring heart. Forgive us, oh Lord. We thank you, Father God. We love you. We lift you up. And now we look to the hills from whence comes our help, God. I remember when I was a little guy, my grandmother used to always say to me, whatever you're struggling with, ask God. He'll help you. So we thank you because we know our help is in you, God. Even when we struggle with anger and depression and all these other things, our help is in you, God. So we thank you, oh God. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name.
you deserve the honor, Lord God. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship Him. Because He's worthy. Because He is dying. 
because he is our peace, because he's our savior, because he is our deliverer, because he's a mighty God, because he's been good, because his mercy never ends, because his love never fails, because he is our God, because he's king. Worship him just because he deserves it. Hallelujah. God, we declare you are in the midst of us. God, you were in the midst of us. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, 
I just don't feel like we are done yet. I don't, I don't know if it's all. So if you would indulge me just a little bit more, just, just more, just, just press a little bit for it. Just, just give him a little bit more. Just, he's right on the other side of this. He's, he's right on the other side. Just reaching out. Hey, Shayando. Just reach out. Just a. A little bit further, just a little bit more that he would be going. Hey, God. Yes, it requires a coming out of yourself, but he's so worth it. It requires a pushing back, a feeling, but he's so worth it. Hey God, hey God, hey God, hey God, hey God. with somebody I ask you to go ahead and do that if you need to hug somebody and pray with them I encourage you to do that if you need to walk around I encourage you to do that you lift your hands and acknowledge the presence of the Lord here this morning. He's here. He is here. Acknowledge his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to have special prayer for the victims of Irma. There are some of our ex-members that are in Tampa 
and they're right in the path of the hurricane. We want to remember Eugene and Leslie. We want to remember Carlos and Wanda. We want to remember Dorothea Reed. And I just learned this morning Alfonso Reed just moved to Tampa and he's preparing for the hurricane. Hallelujah. If you know any of those people, if you are close to any of those people, I need you to come down here and stand proxy for them right now. We're going to stand with them. Hallelujah. We don't believe God's going to keep them safe. That he's going to turn the storm. Yes. That he's going to say peace, be still. Yes. To this hurricane storm. Intercessors, y'all come stand beside somebody. Lay your hands on them. Hallelujah. Start praying with them. Start believing God with them. I'm sorry, the devil can't have our ex-members. Hurricanes can't have our ex-members. Hallelujah. And the rest of you is rent of praise. Stretch your hand this way. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dear God, I just thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, for bringing us here this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege it is to come to your house, Lord God, and freely worship you, oh God. Lord, we lift up all the people affected by Irma and is, and is in Florida in its path, Lord God, especially those who we are loved ones and who we know. Lord, that for a hedge of protection around them and for those in, in the Caribbean countries that were affected for comfort and whole restoration, Lord God. Lord God, you said when it, the time draws near to the end, there will be earthquakes and changes in weather, Lord God. But Lord, help us to know that in times of calamity, you are still in control, Lord God. Lord, help us, Lord, to reach out to those in need and and Lord, just send your people to bring healing. Be, be, protect, not only protect our loved ones, but protect everyone that's affected by the hurricane. Be with the police, the, the rescue workers, the National Guard, Lord God. Send your people there to minister to them as they put them, they go in the midst of danger to save people, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that there won't be any death in this hurricane if it hits, Lord God. Lord, I pray for also the people who are still dealing with the repercussions of Hurricane Harvey, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you could comfort them, those who have lost everything, even lost loved ones. I pray for comfort and restoration, oh God. Lord God, I just pray, Lord, that all the, all the churches and your people in that area will respond to the need and that they will see Jesus, Lord, in the midst of it. Lord, I pray for the sick and sh shut in and those who have any ailments, Lord God, that we don't even know about in their, bo in their body just for healing, oh God. Lord, Lord, that you'll bring he total healing, healing people of not just physical needs or mental needs, but of wounded spirits, Lord God. Things that, that, that were wounded that we don't even know about, Lord. They will bring healing to that, Lord God. Bring healing to our communities, Lord God, and healing in our school. Bring healing in the lives of our, our teenagers and our young adults and our children, Lord God. Lord, we don't know what goes on in school all the time, and maybe because of the age difference, we may not understand it, but Lord, you, call, you cross all generations, Lord. Lord, I just pray for healing. And Lord, give us ears so that we could hear. Give us eyes so that we could see the need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So welcome. Want to shout out Naz. Was that your game on Friday? He had a kickoff return that looked pretty good. Was it a kickoff or a punt return? 
It was a kickoff return. Went about, what, 30, 40 yards on him, didn't you? Yeah. He, he looked good. But we have a blessed group of young people, and it's our Youth Sunday and our Rapid Fire moment. So I'm going to ask Brianni and Rachel to come and do our Rapid Fire moment for us. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 17. And it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm that then when the belt of truth buckle around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, in addition to all this, take up your shield of faith in which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. All right. So um, last Wednesday, we did an activity based off of this scripture. And um, the first thing, Briani was our volunteer. And um, I, I'm sure she regretted it soon after she did it. But we had her walk down like the path with all of us on the sides. But before she walked down, they gave us all these foam balls and uh, like with little signs that said depression and doubt and confusion. And then they had people on the sides with little Nerf guns with pellets inside. And you can imagine what happened when she walked down the path. So she walks down and she got pelted with everything. Like she got hit in her head, everything, right? So then the second time she walked down with God, who was played by Gabby, and then she had a shield. So she walked down with God, but she still got hit, but a lot less because God was with her. But she didn't see the sign that was on Gabby's head that said, how may I help you, right? So then she finally asked God to help her, and then there were angels around. So the, the third time she walked down, she barely got hit. And that's just to show that sometimes, you know, we walk with God and we say that we're saved, so we think we're good. We think that God just going to be like, devil, cut it out. She's saved. Don't touch her anymore. But you still get hit, and we all can tell that as saints, we know that we still get hit with things. But it's important for us, even though we're saved, to ask God, can you help me? Can you send angels, Lord God? Can you send angels to my kids? Can you send angels to those out in Houston, those out in Florida? Can you send angels down? So that's what we did on Wednesday, and that was our rapid fire moment. <laughs> We got a blessed team of people working with our young people from Kira. And good, good morning, everyone. Um, the song that I'm going to dance to is called Search Me, O God by Marty Getz. And the scripture is from Psalms 139, 23, that says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of the everlasting. You have searched me, you have known me, you're acquainted with my ways. You have laid your hand upon me, Heard my thoughts from far away In the night time or the light I'm just as visible to you How marvelous this knowledge is And how I need you to Search me, O
your everlasting way. Lead me in your everlasting way. Search me, O God. How precious are your thoughts toward me. How great is the sum of them. In your book were the days you had for me. When as yet there was none of them, I will praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. My soul knows well how skillful is the one to whom I pray. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, O God, know my anxiety. See if there be any. To God, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. Reneth is a joy to watch. She's serious. She dances for the Lord and she don't care if you give applause or accolades. She just drowns all y'all out. I'm doing this for God. 
I'm doing this for my Savior. And she blesses the, the daylights out of me. Hallelujah. Y'all owe oh God a good praise right now. Come on, come on. Come on. Ha, he, the old folks say he woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. They said, my, I wasn't on my cooling board. You could be in Texas. You could be in Florida. But God saw fit to put you in the Philadelphia area, in the Upper Derby area. Hallelujah. Oh, you owe somebody a testimony. Turn around and tell somebody what God has done for you, how he's blessed you. Turn around and give somebody a testimony. Ha! Glory! Glory to God. Ha! 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 I am grateful for faith. Yes. So grateful. So grateful. If you're like me, I could. Why? Because it's coming from my heart. Flowing from my heart. Yeah. On the His gratefulness. His gratefulness. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time like you really mean it. I am grateful for the things that you have done. I could, I could. Because I'm so grateful. Flowing from my heart. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we ask your blessing upon the word that shall be delivered today. Let this word fall on good ground. Let it fall on good ground. Good ground. Let not the fowl of the air steal it. Or take it away. But let it fall on good ground and let it bring forth fruit. Ah, God. Ah, God. And we pray that that fruit will remain. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving and praise. And our hearts say amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be home.
Good to be back. And I trust those of you during this summer season got an opportunity to get away, be refreshed, be restored. Amen. How many of you had a chance to do that? I mean, I know you did. You went to Spain. Excuse me. I just went to the Poconos. But I had fun because I was with my baby. If I'm in a log cabin, I can have fun with her. I know I ain't watching myself. Amen. Well, I just learned something. I, I learned that uh, Nancy and Charles Scott celebrated a 45-year anniversary. Forty-five years. That's four decades plus a half a decade. God is good. And did I learn that the Collins are celebrating an anniversary? How many years? 24. Wow. That's two decades. Any other anniversaries? Birthdays. This week? Oh, she's trying to hide. Nicole Smith. Stand up, Nicole. Stand up. You can't do nothing to her. I'm watching you. Happy birthday. It's your birthday? It was Wednesday. Wow. Happy birthday, Ed. You had a birthday. How old are you, sweetheart? Eight? Six? Happy birthday to you. Really? All right. All right. Taylor? How old are you going to be? Eleven. Eleven. When is your birthday? Twenty-first. All right. You want to say something, Mom? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, we, we accept it. We receive it. Well, happy special day. Happy every happy amen. And amen. Amen. All right. Let's get into the word today. And I want you to open to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verses 4 through about 10. Matthew 24. Some of you will immediately identify that. That's the chapter that deals with the last days. I want to talk about that. And I'm going to try to do it by breaking down each verse. 
I want to talk about the D-Day challenges. The D-Day challenges. And I'm calling them D-Day challenges because all of the principles or all of the factors that I'm going to talk about begin with the letter D. Y'all knew that. You know me by now. In this season, in this era, in this time, in this Kairos, we need people with what I call the Issachar anointing. People who can discern the signs of the time. And tell God's people what they need to do. Morally and practically. We need that anointing. Spiritually, morally, and practically. Because we're living in an age. The Bible calls it the last days. Where there's so many things coming at us. We can't keep up with it. And the Lord identified several D factors that we're going to have to cope with as a church in this era, in this time. So let's get to it. The first D is in verse 4. The first D is deception. Everybody say deception. He says... Let no man deceive you because many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and shall deceive many. We are living in an age where we got a lot of religious and political leaders that have a messianic complex. They act like they're God. Some of them say they God. And they make statements that should only be attributable to the Savior. They make statements like, only I can save you. Only I can make a difference. I'm the one. I beg your pardon. You didn't die for me. You don't have any salvation powers. You don't have any redemptive ability. There is only one man, one Lord, one faith, one mediator between God and man. And it ain't none of these religious leaders, it ain't none of these political leaders. Get your eyes off of man. This country is going through a mass deception, corporate delusion. And a whole lot of so-called saints are falling for the okie doke. What are we to do in an age of such deception? What are we to do? The first thing that we have to do, we need to ask God to give us an infusion of discernment. We need to see stuff in the spirit realm. We need to recognize the true from the false. And when it's false, we need to call it out. Because there are a lot of folks being blindsided by this deception. We need to call it out. And we need to expose it. Evil doesn't like to be exposed. But God has put his people here to be salt. To be light. 
We're here to show stuff up. To call out stuff that ain't right. In the first place we got to call out stuff that ain't right is in the church. We can't get to the world because we got to deal with us. Deception. Everybody say deception. That's the first thing in this era we got to deal with. But it goes on a little further from there. In Matthew 24, verses 6 through 7, he talks about the second D, and that is division. Turn to somebody and say, there's a lot of division. There's so much division in the world and in this country. I wake up some mornings and I wonder, Oh, we living in 1950? We're divided. He said there will be wars and rumors of wars. In other words, there will be military divisions. Don't we see it? We got North Korea versus the U.S. We got Afghanistan acting up. We got Russia doing cyber terrorism on us. This is a scenario in which every time you turn around, there's a war or a rumor about one about to happen. Military divisions. And then he says, nation shall rise against nation. That word nation is an interesting word. It's the original Greek word Ethnos. In other words, ethnic groups. Black against white. I never thought I'd live to see radical people, neo Nazis, marching down the middle of the street. Shouting anti-Jewish rhetoric. It appears that we're moving backwards. Divisions. Divisions. Based on race. Kingdom against kingdom. Divisions based on political differences. There is more partisanship right now than there has ever been. You can forget getting anything out of Congress. They too divided. Divisions. What should the church do with these divisions? Well, number one, we shouldn't contribute to it. Our job when there is division is to bring people together. We are to be peacemakers. And that word peacemakers means a promoter and lover of peace. Amen. We're supposed to have the ministry of reconciliation. We're supposed to be the go-betweens when people or at opposite ends. We're supposed to bring them together. Not contribute to the confusion. We live in an age. Where we got a group of leaders. Who love confusion. Confusion is like a drug. They thrive on it. Where are the peacemakers? Not the hell raisers. Where are the peacemakers? In the house of God. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers because they shall be called the children of God. The peacemakers will be called the children of God. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14, work at living in peace with everyone. Work at living a holy life. 
For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. There's a relationship between holiness and peace. If you are not a peacemaker, if you are not bringing peace, if everywhere you go, confusion follows, I question your holiness. There's something wrong. We're supposed to be peacemakers. That's the second D that I see. Third D, disaster. Matthew 24, 7, Jesus lists the disasters, and we see all of them right now. He said there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. We have 140 million people who have died due to hunger. Pestilence, that's a virulent, infectious, contagious disease caused by some kind of creature. We went through an epidemic of Ebola, and right after that, we had to deal with Zika. And about a hundred of them that I can't even name. Pestilences, infectious diseases, killing people. They call them zoonotic disease. They're found in animals but pass to humans. Pestilence. And on top of all that, we got to deal with earthquakes. Earthquakes. America gets hit with 260 known earthquakes. There was just one recently in Mexico. The last time I counted, 68 people had died. The earthquake was like 8.2 on the Richter scale. Then they had the audacity to have an aftershock. And the aftershock wasn't no slouch. It was about six or seven points on the Richter square. We're starting to have earthquakes in places that never had none. The Midwest starting to have earthquakes. Not too long ago, New York was hit by a tremor. Are you hearing me? Don't think you are safe. Because you live in Philadelphia. Because you live in Upper Darby. What must the church do in light of these earthquakes, these disasters? Irma. And Irma was such a powerful storm that it was causing the earthquake equipment to go off. That's how powerful that storm was. What should we do? We need the Issachar anointing to know what to do in this situation. What should we do? Well, the first thing you need to do is to use some common sense and prepare. Me and my wife have decided to put away food, jugs of water. Oh, I'm not saying you got to become a prepper, a survivalist, and have a cache of guns. I'm not saying that, but use some common sense. Some of you have been debating buying a generator. If you can afford one, buy it. Because you don't know what's going to happen. These hurricanes have a mind of their own. They can come up the coast. And they can come right to your house. 
Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. You could be a victim just like anybody else. Amen. Tell somebody, don't fool yourself. You need an emergency preparedness kit. Battery operated radio. There's some solar powered utilities. Jugs of water. Non-perishable food. Prepare. Secondly, because of the proliferation of these disasters, the victims are going to constantly be looking to the church for help and support. And we have got to be ready to respond to their victimization from these natural disasters. We can't do like some of these churches are doing or did in Texas. They were so prissy they couldn't open their doors. Don't ever get to the point where you so prissy, you so uppity, you so middle class that you can't open your church to a victim of a disaster. Hallelujah. Some of you have been through hurricanes, have been through disasters. Some of you had your own disaster. And God intervened. He brought you out. He delivered you. And he wants you to have the same compassion that he showed you. Amen. amen. No, you don't have to say amen. 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 We're going to have to be put in a position where we help the victims of these natural disasters. Amen. The next D. Distress. It says in Matthew 24, 8, uh, all these are the beginning of sorrow. Now that word sorrow is a very interesting word. It's not necessarily talking about sadness. The original Greek word for sorrow there is birth pain. Oh Lord have mercy. The problem with the earth is that the earth is pregnant with God's purpose. God's agenda. It is contracting. The earth is having labor pains. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. The earth has a baby of God's will on the inside of it. And it's trying to get rid of the baby. The whole creation is groaning. What are they groaning about? What are they travailing about? The whole creation is travailing. Got birth pains waiting for you to be delivered. The world is waiting for you to get your act together. The world is waiting for the sons of God to manifest themselves. Tell somebody the world is waiting for you. Hallelujah. 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 Like a woman giving birth, there will always be some pain in the earth. But she endures the pain when she sees the joy of the baby that's born. All of a sudden, she forgets about the pain when the baby is born. This world is going to continue to contract and give labor pains until we come forth. We manifest that power. We manifest God's glory. We manifest God's blessing. We manifest God's strength. We manifest God's might. When we come forth, Until that happens, the world is going to continue 
to have contractions. The world is going to continue to have great pain and tribulation. What must we do in this era where folks are so full of sorrow and pain? We've got to speak the words of comfort. We've got to speak the words of encouragement. Hallelujah. We don't need to talk negative words. We need to speak words of life. Words of faith. Words of trust. Hallelujah. There's enough negative words being spoken in the universe. There's enough negative words being spoken on the news. I've decided to limit a lot of them. I watch the weather, but a lot of the news, it's bad news. Every minute you see something bad on there. But where there is bad news, it is time for the saints to speak some good news. Jesus is alive. Jesus is well. He died for you. He can save you. He can deliver you. He can help you. Speak words of life. And start with yourself. Speak over yourself. Speak over your family. Speak over your job. You got a crazy boss? Speak the words of life. They're going to change, Lord. They're going to get saved, Lord. You got a crazy daughter? Speak life over her. Speak life over your son. Speak the words of the promises of God. Yeah, distress. Then in verse 9, he talks about another one, which I call disgust. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. Watch this. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. You know what the most persecuted group is in the world? It's not Muslims. It's Christians. They're being killed at an alarming rate. We're being persecuted. What are we to do in this era where we're being so hated and people have such disgust for us? Well, we need to arm our minds with the notion we're going to have to just go through. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Oh, help me, Lord. You can't shortcut it anymore. You can't play church anymore. You got to be real. You got to be rooted. You got to be faithful in this era where we're going through. Some of y'all don't want to go through. You want everything to be hunky-dory. I got news for you. God got some stuff planned for you. Yeah, baby. You going to walk into that stuff. Hallelujah. Because in order to get the stuff out of you, he's going to have to take you through some stuff. He'll take you through the keyhole if you can stand it. Get ready. Develop a mindset that every now and then, I got to suffer. Hallelujah. What y'all call suffering, that ain't suffering. I can't get the hoagie that I wanted. <laughs> that ain't no suffering. Somebody called me uh, a holy roller. Well, Jesus was the first holy roller. Didn't he roll a stone away? That ought to make you jump. That ought to make you shout. That ought to make you raise your hand and praise God. God's going to teach us how to glory in tribulation. Sometimes you can go through so much tribulation and get to a point where 
Well, Lord, I can't complain no more. Every time I turn around, there's something else. I might as well praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're working something in me. You're doing something in my life. You're having your way in me. Hallelujah. I'm your property. I'm your heritage. You're doing your thing. Just let me get out of the way so you can have your way. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I want to get out of the way so he can have his way. Glory to God. Claim the promises of God as you go through. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, y'all don't hear. If you've been afflicted, it is a badge of honor. It's telling you you must have been righteous or the devil would mess with you. Praise God. Give him glory. All oh, that will live godly will suffer persecution. If you're being persecuted, it's a badge. You must be godly. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, somebody who's been through, I want you to lift your hands. Hallelujah. Some of y'all going through right now Hallelujah. and wondering why you're going through. God said, because you're righteous. Hallelujah. God said, because you're righteous. On, because you're godly. That's why they don't like you on the job. That's why they don't like you in your neighborhood. They hate you because of the Christ that's in you. Get it straight, baby. That's a good sign. Tell somebody that's a good sign. Claim the promises of God. In fact, who's going through in here now? Uh, who's going through right now? Hallelujah. Am I the only one? You know what I want you to do? Get a promise on your lips right now. Hallelujah. Get a scripture on your mouth right now. Turn to your neighbor and quote that promise right now. Oh, say it with joy. Say it like you mean it. Say it like it's going to happen. Say it like you got the solution. Ha! Glory! I'm quoting my own scriptures. I told the devil many, many of the afflictions of the righteous. I'm righteous. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give God a praise offering. Those of you that are going through, raise your hands and give God some glory. Glory in your tribulation. Ah. Ah. You're doing something right. You're doing something right. You're being something right. That's a good sign, baby. I got two more D's to give you. Verse 10. 
then many people will fall away and will betray one another and will hate one another. We live in a time, in a season, in a kairos where people are deserting God. They're leaving the church. America is only about a 51% Protestant nation at this point because there's so many folks leaving the church. And evangelicals, 1,500 evangelicals leave the church Daily. And most of them don't come back. Millennials are abandoning the church in droves. They say because the Christians are not reflecting Jesus. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying up in here. They say we want community. We want substance. They want older men and women to pour into them. They want more depth, more Bible. They want somebody to be concerned for injustice. The marginalized, the poor. Many millennials love Jesus. They want to engage in a radical mission for Christ. But they find too many people in the church concerned with potlucks, gossip, and building new buildings. They're tired. They want the real things. That's why we can't get caught up in numbers. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. You don't need a crowd, just a few people who love the Lord on fire for God who want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You can have your own revival. Hallelujah. That's a few folks. Today we met with the men. We prayed and the spirit of God came in that room. We didn't have a whole lot of folk. You don't need a whole lot of folk. In fact, some of them folk bring their spirit with them. You don't want a whole lot of folks. Amen. We need, we need, we need to remember the church ain't the building. You can have a mega church and it just be one giant nursery. I ain't in the numbers. Whether y'all show up or not, I'm going to praise God. I don't need you. Because when I'm praising him, I'm lost. I don't even see you. I'm in my world. I'm blessing him for what he's done in my life. How he brought me out. You don't know what he brought me out. So excuse me. If I praise it, if you want to be cute, get out of my way. Let me bless it. Let me say hallelujah. Let me yada. Let me to heal up. Let me barack. Let me exalt him. Let me extol him. Let me raise him. Is there anybody here feel like me? Hallelujah. Is there anybody here thanking God for what he has brought you through? 
Is there anybody here? You glad you saved? You glad you're a child of God? Lift your hand and let God know till you're Listen. Listen. This is hot. This is why we got to keep engaging in evangelism. Amen. We got to keep engaging in discipleship. So all the old crowd that leaves, we replace them with some new blood, some fresh blood. We went out yesterday and we prayed around 148. Hallelujah. We were on the street. We formed a prayer wall around that building. Hallelujah. We laid our hands and we walked around that building. Our creative arts team went with their flags. And we got as loud as we could. Hallelujah. Folks were coming out of houses. Folks were coming out of stores. So what in the world is going on? Oh, God. Who praying like that? We wanted them to hear us pray. You know what happened? People in the community start joining our prayer. Start joining hands with us. They didn't even know what we were necessarily. They didn't care. The community is right. The action is not in the four walls. The action is on the street. In the community. Sister Habiba. Ministered to a lady. From the community. Laid hands on her. When she finished. Last thing I saw. That lady running down the street. Hallelujah. They're waiting for the anointing that we have. I'm going to close. I got to get you out of here. And then the last D is defiance. Because of iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Cold-hearted defiance. People doing cold-hearted things. And we have to call it out in this season. Well, I'm going to close now. I'm going to close now. Yeah. There's a whole lot of D's. But there's one D I didn't talk about. Because it's not in Matthew 24. Uh -huh. It's in Acts 2.17. The other deeds are what man is doing to man, doing to men, and doing to the environment. But this last deed is what God is going to be doing. In the last day, say of God, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. That last D is deluge. 
And what is a deluge? A deluge is a downpour. Hallelujah. A great flood. Overflowing of water. A drenching rain. God is going to bring a deluge of his spirit in the last day. There's going to be a pouring out of the Holy Ghost. A flowing of the spirit. A gushing of the anointing. A surging of power. A jetting of the unicorn. A showering of blessing and a drenching of God's presence. This last day outpouring is going to do in the spirit realm what these hurricanes are doing in the natural. Y'all don't hear me. The hurricanes brought a lot of flood. And I want you to know that the spirit is going to bring a flood. A flood of joy. Flood of peace. Flood of power. Flood of the anointing. There's going to be a lot of wind. But it will be a rushing mighty wind. Hallelujah. It's going to bring a lot of destruction. Just like these hurricanes. It's going to destroy. But it won't be destroying people. It will be destroying strongholds. It will be tearing up generational curses. It will be breaking down barriers. Breaking down walls. Between the church. There is a deluge. A drinking that's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And there ain't nothing that the devil can do to stop it. No force in hell is going to start this outpouring. I'm going to be in that rain. I'm going to get wet. I don't need no rain. I don't want no umbrella. I want to get soaked. I want to get drenched. I want to get wet. Is there anybody else that wants to get wet? If you want to get wet, will you stand up and praise the rainmaker? Tell somebody, I don't mind getting wet. Oh, God. Oh, God. Tell them I want to get wet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to three people quickly. Three people. Don't matter who they are. If they say, turn to them and tell them something God said to you today. Hallelujah. 